Knowing how to program an FPGA is one of the key steps to the successful implementation of FPGA designs. Traditional methods used approaches such as VHDL, but now graphical methods of programming FPGAs are being used. LabVIEW FPGA is one program. It combines the established graphical interface of LabVIEW with additional tools to enable it to program FPGAs. One of the advantages of this is that anyone with LabVIEW experience can very quickly start programming FPGAs. In this video, we'll tell you how to program FPGAs using LabVIEW, giving you an example demonstration. And then some industry experts will give you some of their top tips on how to program FPGAs. The first question to answer, though, is what are the benefits of graphical programming for FPGAs? The benefits of a graphical language include the ability to drag and drop hardware input and output so that you can very quickly interact with external hardware and also you can visually see the structure of your code which makes debugging much simpler. To see how to program an FPGA in LabVIEW, Dr Charlotte Nicolau leads us through a demonstration. Here we have a National Instrument Compact Rio which contains a real-time processor and operating system an FPGA, and modules to do signal input-output. We're going to be using the thermocouple and strain gauge, as well as the LEDs on this disk, for this LabVIEW demo. Here we have our LabVIEW project, where we can see our various hardware targets and store our code. We can see the laptop that I'm on, as well as our Compact Rio, where we can add code to execute either on the Compact Rio itself, or the FPGA. Here is some FPGA code, and we can also see all of our inputs and outputs from the hardware modules. Every piece of LabVIEW code is known as a VI and has a front panel, shown here, and a block diagram. I'm going to open the block diagram we put our actual code. I have already added some simple mathematical functions which I'm going to build on. First, I'm going to read from my RTD, which is a very simple process and there's no programming needed. I just drag my RTD input onto my block diagram. I'm going to read the strain in the same way and then wire my strain value into my simple maths functions to scale the signal. Now I want to send my raw temperature and strain values to my compact Rio or host for display and analysis. I can use a bundle function to join the two values together in what is known as a cluster. If I right click, I can create an indicator on my front panel. So now if I go back to my FPGA front panel, we can see the two values that I want to send to our host. Anything on the front panel can be written to or read by the FPGA or the host target, so they can communicate. I also have the option to stream lots of data in a FIFO, but I don't actually need to send that much data with this application. Going back to the code, I want to display my strain on the LEDs on my hardware. I have a code block, or a sub-VI, as they're known in LabVIEW, that I can drag onto my code that will write my scaled value to the LED row A. Lastly, I want my code to run continuously, so I'm adding a while loop. I drag it around my code and everything inside it will repeat until I give the loop a true constant. If this was a critical application, I would want my code to run indefinitely on the FPGA. So I'm going to wire a false constant into the loop so it never stops. To show how we compile our code into something the FPGA can read, we're going to use a finished version of my code. I've added a little bit more code to read the scale temperature value from my host to output on two rows of the LEDs. So now the temperature goes from the FPGA out through the front panel to the Compact Rio host, gets scaled on the host and then sent back to the FPGA through the front panel to light up the LEDs. If I switch to the front panel we can see that we have our scale temperature value visible. Now we need to compile our code into a bit file, 
which is what the FPDA uses to configure its circuitry. I do this from my project. Here I have some compilation properties that I can easily configure, like name and location. I can also specify what my highest level VI is, and LabVIEW will automatically include any direct dependencies, so we don't need to worry about it. Clicking Build then asks me where I want to compile my code. I can choose to compile on my laptop, or a networked computer, or even use the dedicated LabVIEW compile service, which is what I'm going to choose here. If I click OK, it starts to compile, which can take a little bit of time. In this case, it took about 12 minutes. Now to deploy my FPGA bit file and run my application, I'm going to open the host code. We can see that it's collecting my temperature and strain readings. In our code, if I open it up, you can see that we are referencing our FPGA's front panel, where we read the temperature and strain. The temperature then gets scaled using MathScript code and sent back to the FPGA. If I push the strain bar on my hardware, you can see the values change on my front panel and the LEDs light up on hardware. Similarly, the same works when I change the temperature that my thermocouple is reading. Looking at how the demonstration works, pressing the strain gauge results in more green LEDs lighting up, whereas holding the temperature sensor results in more white and purple LEDs lighting up. Having seen a basic demonstration showing the concepts of programming an FPGA in LabVIEW, here are some top tips from industry experts to enable you to program more easily with less issues. The big thing for me is that it's still just LabVIEW. So focus on the basics, focus on the things that you know, and transition them across to the LabVIEW FPGA environment. One tip that's important to think about is the memory usage of your FPGA. So there is a finite amount of memory on your FPGA and if you try and put too much code onto it you're going to produce an error. So benchmarking I think is really key. Being able to have that datum and that kind of solid zero point is really important consistently across your code. So definitely benchmarking. Other things that are important to consider is the synchronization. If you have lots of different algorithms running on an FPGA, then you need to synchronize them and there's functions to help you do that. I think that you really have to be smart about the problem you approach. You need to think about it simply and you need to plan out everything that you're about to do. And one final important tip. So it's really important to make sure that you use the correct target in your project because some functions won't work for certain FPGA targets. You want to make sure you have the right target and therefore the right code. So there it is, a quick demonstration and some key top tips for programming an FPGA using LabVIEW.